surgery. And this morning I'm going to show you a more advanced procedure we uh, perform in minimally invasive, uh, taking a spur off the dorsal asset of the patient's foot who had it for a number of years and had a lot of pain with it. Uh, let's just start with their x-rays. This is six months later. We'll talk to the patient as well. Uh, if you look at her x-ray, you can see her in her x-ray here, she has a lot of exostosis on the dorsal aspect of her foot. Now this is not at the first metatarsal cuneiform joint. This is more in the midfoot area. And this area has a lot of uh, vessels and neurovascular structures here. So you have to be careful when you uh, make incisions into this area. This is our post-op six months later. You can see we got a very nice smooth reduction of the exostosis and complete resolving her pain. Now one of the things you have to keep in mind, one of the best ways to treat this type of pain in the dorsal aspect of the foot is to perform a gastroc recession. And that's a gastrocnemius recession. But in this patient, she had an unusual issue. This occurred from an injury she, occurred, uh, she had sustained when she was 12 years old, which she had a fracture of her foot and some injuries to her lower extremity. So she doesn't have gastroc equinus, so this would be inappropriate. So we wanted to remove this and do this where it wouldn't leave her with any uh, neuritis. So we performed this with minimally invasive surgery, and we'll go through some of that right now. Okay, so this is six months later. I wanted to show you her foot. She did have a fairly large exostosis here. You can see now her, this is pretty much gone for her. She can wear shoe gear without pain and walk without pain. But let's just test her for gastroc equinus. If you look at her foot here, if we press back, we got, you, know, you can see she gets a lot of movement in her foot. So for this patient, performing the gastroc recession for the dorsal pain would not be as appropriate. Of course, for a knee bent, she still gets the same real good movement up. So what we did with her uh, to correct this exostosis she had on the dorsal aspect of the foot, we made a small incision here, and we, we uh, took some uh, instrumentation we used in minimally invasive surgery to actually free down to the periosteal layer, thereby taking our vascular structures out of the way dorsally. And then we, uh, uh, we used a 3-1 burr and also a Isham straight burr to remove this exostosis. And we'll show you the surgical procedure uh, here. I'll, I'll, I'll discuss that with you. So this portion of our video, we're going to uh, show you the actual surgery. Uh, here's the patient on the OR table. You can see the uh, dorsal exostosis on the uh, top of her foot here, which is painful for her in shoe gear, and has also become very painful for her in her normal activities. So what we did with this, uh, to ensure that we uh, didn't involve our neurovascular structures, we mapped out her arteries and where the neurovascular structure would be. We're basically uh, marking out the dorsalis pedis pulse here and the artery here uh, utilizing the Doppler. So here's, here's me doing this. You can see me uh, listening to the Doppler and get an exact location of where we want to try to avoid our neurovascular structures here. Once we did this, we took a Sharpie and basically mapped out that area. So that allowed me to know exactly where to place my incision away from my neurovascular structures. So once we had that done, we began to make an, we made an incision on the uh, just lateral to our neurovascular structures and uh, far enough lateral to make sure we were, uh, we were able to get the majority of the exostosis off. The exostosis was not in the first metatarsal cuneiform, but more in the midfoot involving uh, more of the second, third uh, cuneiform joint area. Once this was performed, we uh, underscored this with uh, instrumentation. I mostly used uh, blunt, blunt uh, instrumentation. We used a lock elevator uh, to do this, and this allowed me to go underneath the neurovascular structures. Uh, we also did not utilize a tourniquet so that we could uh, you know, make sure that we did, uh, were not into the vascular structures here. It's just me. Uh, this is all. You see my mark on the top of the foot there where the neurovascular structures are on where we make our incision here. Once this was underscored, we then first took a uh, small uh, Isham burr, or actually a straight Isham burr, and began to, uh, to uh, roughen up the bony surface underneath our vascular structures, and then removed the remaining of this with a 3-1 burr. Yeah, we did have the C-arm engaged, uh, pushing it back and forth to see what we're at each point of the, uh, the surgery. This is the 3-1 now we're using to reduce the uh, exostosis. This is how it looked on the C-arm. You can really appreciate the amount of exostosis here uh, 
this shows this actually looks like it's in the first um, met kinetic form but that's actually more lateral to that so that's what we're dealing with here this is the amount of exostosis the patient actually had once we began to uh, denude the, uh, the bony spurring, we're able to express this out as bone paste. Uh, here's our C-arm view now postoperatively, just here in the, on the OR tab. You can see the amount of uh, exostosis we were able to remove here. Uh, once we get some of this paste out, we do take a small rasp and make sure nothing, uh, none of the bony paste is uh, left in the soft tissue, expressing out the remaining por uh, portion of the uh, bony paste. This is how she looked uh, in the immediate post-op. You can see the exostosis now uh, gone in this x-ray. I mean, this uh, C-arm in this, uh, this view here. A little more close-up view where we placed our incision. There's our, uh, once again, our pre-op x-ray. You can see the, dec uh, the exostosis on the dorsal aspect here. This is our x-ray post-op. This is at six months. So we got a real good, uh, we got a real good uh, improvement in her, in her function here. And we're able to do this uh, this uh, uh, surgery, we'll utilize a minimally invasive surgery. Uh, now, I've done this traditional, and, and it does work, but you have to be very careful with your neurovascular structures, whether you do this in minimally invasive or, or open. What I found in many of the open procedures, we tried to treat this way. We end up with neuritis because of the scarring and, and, and issues we get with healing dorsally. With this technique, we're going underneath our uh, vascular structures and we're able to uh, reduce neuritis and reduce the amount of soft tissue uh, trauma with the surgery. So this was a very successful surgery. The patient actually has has 100% relief in their pain. And the next portion is going to be our, uh, our testimony of the patient just to get her, uh, her view on the surgery. Okay, this portion of our video is the uh, patient testimony, which I, I think is very important. I mean, all, this, all the scientific portions that we, we go over, those are very important. But, what, what is also important to me is whether or not the patients do well with the surgeries we do. Whether those surgeries are minimally invasive or whether those surgeries are, are traditional. Uh, this, we, we've shown you the patient and she had a lot of pain with this. Uh, her pain was quite severe before coming to see us. She was having trouble even wearing her flip-flops or, or things that weren't putting pressure on her foot and pain with, uh, with her with shoe gear. Now we're at six months. We've been able to reduce uh, the majority of the exostosis and we've gotten her out of pain. Now, with, with performing traditional procedures on this, we would basically have to make an incision dorsally here. And there's a lot of neurovascular structures here that sometimes will lead you to neuritis when you do those surgeries. So this we did away from our vascular structures uh, by dissecting underneath and lifting those out of the way utilizing some special instrumentation. We use a minimally invasive surgery. But let's just talk to the patient. Uh, now, with your, your foot before the surgery, how, how bad was your foot? Let's say zero being not that bad, ten being extremely bad for you. What, what was it's your foot? It was about eight and a half to a nine most of the time. So you had a lot of pain with your yeah. foot. Now, we did the surgery six months ago. How was your post op Did you have a lot of pain post operatively? Or? It was a lot easier than I expected it to be. Right. I was walking on the foot and not, not having a lot of pain in just a few days. Okay. And now, are you happy with your foot now? Oh, yes. Any pain with your foot now? No. Well, we, if from zero to ten, do you have any pain at all with your foot? Does it ever hurt you? No, not not there, not okay. anymore. Good. So that that's a good testimony. We're able to uh, take a deformity that uh, can be a challenge using uh, traditional procedures. We apply minimally invasive techniques uh, to this deformity, and we're able to reduce that exostosis, thereby getting rid of her pain actually getting her 100% relief in pain. And we did this without, uh, without damaging the neurovascular structures, which we may have done if we'd chosen traditional procedures with this.